Hi, welcome to the lesson. I am Ms. Kavinde, a civil engineering lecturer at Majuba Tivet College. I will be taking you through the subject Plumbing Level 2 of the NCB program. The reference textbook, which will be in use, is from Pearson of the details which you see on your screen. For this lesson, we will look at topic 3, which is on materials, tools, and equipment used in plumbing. This specific lesson will focus on tools and equipment only. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify plumbing tools and equipment as well as describe the uses of plumbing tools and equipment. I suggest you have your plumbing notebook at hand so you take down notes. Don't forget to rewind where you are not clear. I have compiled videos for you to understand what it is I'm talking about much easier. Take note that there are a number of tools and equipment used in the construction industry and we will only look at just some of them. First we have your digging tools. A spade is used for digging trenches when pipes are to be laid in the ground. In appearance, they typically have a rectangular metal blade at the end. A shovel is similar in appearance to a spade, but it is more appropriate for moving soil and rubble from one point to another, as does a wheelbarrow. Pick X is used to loosen hard ground or split rock so it is easier to dig an area. A brick laying trowel is used to apply mortar on bricks with a technique called battering. Plumbers normally use a trowel when working on manholes, baths and showers. The next set of tools is measuring tools. Let's take a look at them. First we have a steel tape, which is a flexible ruler and they come in different lengths. A long tape measure is recognizable by having a crank handle that you turn to wind the tape. Then we have a metal ruler, which is used in construction because this is durable. All of these tools are for measuring lengths. Our next set of tools is our marking tools. We have a scriber, which is a sharp instrument used to mark lines when measuring. They are more accurate than a pencil or chalk. Then we have dividers, which have jointed legs which move. A divider is used for marking circles and arcs, for example, when working with sheets metal. Then we have a chalk line. Chalk line is a chalk coated string in a casing and it is used to mark straight lines on any solid surface. Our next set of tools is tools for leveling and squaring. These tools are very important in industry in order to ensure accuracy in construction work. We need to make sure that all horizontal surfaces are flat and level and that all vertical surfaces are perpendicular to the horizontal surface. 
let's look at them as well we have a builder square which is used to scribe lines at 90 degrees to one another and also checks corners if they are at 90 degrees then we have a chi square which is similar to the builder square but smaller it is also used to scribe and check corners at 90 degrees spirit level is used to set out drains and to check levels when doing various plumbing jobs you can use them horizontally or you can use them vertically A torpedo level is also used to check vertical and horizontal levels. The only difference is that it is much smaller and works well in tight spaces. Then we have a plumb bomb. It is a weight with a pointed tip at the bottom attached to a string. It relies on the force of gravity. A plumb bomb is used to determine vertical levels only. A line level is attached to a builder's line during setting out. It is used to determine the datum level from which inverts of a drainage system will be determined. A water level relies on the principle that water is always level. It is used to determine the level spot on two items that are at a distance from each other. A dumpy level is an optical instrument which consists of a telescope tube which can rotate on a tripod. It is used to find the datum level at various places and transfers the levels over long distances. There are also other tools which help with setting out for a job. They are the following. We have a straight edge, boning rods, stakes or pins, and the builder's line. These are all very useful for setting out. Our next set of tools is the fastening and holding tools. We'll first look at screwdrivers, then we'll look at handles. A screwdriver is used simply for screwing and unscrewing screws. They come in different sizes and lengths, so it is important to use the correct one for a specific job. The two common types of the screwdriver are the slotted head, known as a flat, and the cross head type, known as a star or phillips. A ratchet screwdriver is useful in that instead of carrying many screwdrivers you can carry just one and change the bits and front so you can fit onto it depending on the size and the shape of the screw you are working with. Then we have our hammers. A club hammer can be used for knocking pegs into the ground, driving nails into the wall, as well as light demolition work.
a cross pin hammer and a straight hammer are both best to tap a nail gently between your fingers or to shape metal. A ball pin hammer is used for shaping metal or closing rivets. Then a claw hammer is used to knock nails into material and is also used as a lever to take the nails out. A brick hammer is simply used for cutting bricks. Then we have mallets. Mallets are lightweight and are covered with rubber or leather material and are used to hammer a material that can be damaged by a normal metal head hammer. Let us now look at spanners as well as wrenches. Spanners are used to tighten a bolt onto a nut as well as loosen it. They come in different sizes depending on the bolt you are working on. There is an open-ended spanner and then there is a ring spanner. You can also buy a combination spanner which has an open end and a ring end. Adjustable spanners are useful because you can adjust the size of the opening to fit the bolts you are working on. We then have box spanners which are used for turning fasteners in hard to reach places. A socket spanner comes with different size sockets which you fits onto the ratchet in order to use it. We then have a basin wrench. Like a box spanner, it is used in tight places. A pipe or monkey wrench is used to turn threaded pipes and pipe fittings for assembly or loosening the pipes and fittings when disassembling. Let us move on to pliers, vices, and clamps. Okay. A round nose plier works well with very small material, and a long nose plier is best for gripping and bending sheet metal is used to join two pieces of material together by pressing one tight on top of the other for a permanent grip. We also have water pump pliers which is used for gripping irregular shaped objects, holding pipes and also turning nuts and bolts. We also have the vice grip. There are various types of vice grips. There are those that can remove broken screws, loosen frozen nuts, and also those which are good to hold material together when working on them. We also have Bench vices. Bench vices hold materials you are working on in place. A pipe vise holds a pipe securely so that it can be cut or threaded. A G clamp also holds material you are working on together. Corner clamps hold two sides at 90 degrees to one another when working on them. For example, when you need to drive fasteners through the material and keep the two sides in place together. Okay, let's just move on to bending tools. Okay. We have what you call a bending spring, 
which are used to bend copper pipes and PVC pipes. You get an internal bending spring as well as an external bending spring. There's also a scissor type bender. It is a tool for bending pipes of different materials to form many angles and curves. Another bender you'll find is the stand type. It stands on its own legs. Then we have the bench type which is mounted onto a work bench. A bending brake is a tool used for bending sheet metal accurately. Okay, let's move on to cutting tools. Cutting tools are as follows. We have the tin snip, which is used to cut sheet metal. There are different types. They come in various colors. Then we have a hacksaw, which is used to cut different materials. In plumbing, we normally use them to cut plastic pipes. We also have a punch, which marks the center of a point. You use it with a hammer to mark a point, for example, when you need to drill a hole through a material. Then there's a gelatine, or gelatine rather. It cuts sheet metal straight. Then we have the pipe cutter. You get pipe cutters to cut plastic pipes as well as copper pipes. A chisel is used with a hammer to cut through or chip hard material like brick or stone. A bolster is used with a hammer as well to cut bricks neatly before laying them. A tap wrench is used to make threads on the inside of fittings. A pipe threader is a tool we normally use in plumbing. Sorry. A pipe threader is a tool we normally use in plumbing to make the threads on the outside of the pipe. This tool comes with dies of different sizes. You change these dies according to the size of pipe you are working on. Okay, the next set of tools is your deburring tools. When you cut material, you find that it does not remain smooth. So for that, this reason, you will need a reamer or a file. Okay. A reamer is used to remove bumps or burrs from pipes, especially after cutting them. There are different types of re reamers. But they serve the same purpose, which is to smoothen the pipe. There is also a file, which is also used to smoothen various materials. Okay, let us look at tools for cleaning and clearing drains as well as the tool to fix a tap leak. A plunger is used to clear blockages by pumping it at a drain opening. 
Take note that a plunger for a toilet looks different to fit the bottom of the to toilet bowl to allow for proper suction. We also have a flexible drain cleaning rod, which is a number of short rods connected together, depending on how long you need it. This is also used to unplug a drain. We have what you call a tap resetting tool. It repairs a compression washer tap when there is a leak. Sometimes you do not need to buy a new washer. You may just need to reset your tap to fix a leak. We will look at tools for testing trains. After connecting a pipe system, it is important to check if there won't be any leaks from the system. We do this by performing an air compression test. In order to perform this test, you will either need a pressure gauge or a manometer with a number of other attachments. All of these can come as a set called an air pressure test kit. Every plumber should be able to perform this test correctly. I hope you have learned something from this lesson. Thanks for watching. The next lesson will be on power tools and ladders.